Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to talk about Litecoin. We have not spoken about Litecoin in many, many months. We'll talk about why. Um, so if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also do check out the Telegram channel if you want to discuss some of the ideas I'm going to present in this video. If you want to discuss them with me, uh, then do so. You can find the Telegram channel here, and you can find a link to it in the description below, so please check that out. So. This chart is, is one of those charts we talked a little bit about back in, in 2019. And, you know, we, we, we anticipated, you know, this, this uh, move up. We anticipated the move down just based on historical data. Uh, the idea that Litecoin does seem to make a move before the halving, uh, given the fact that we had only seen it happen once before. It was, you know, not entirely certain, obviously, if that was going to happen. Um, but we did see a pump going into the halving and then, or before the halving and then going into the halving. We saw it we saw it go down and then what did we say if you go back and watch the most recent video of litecoin which i think was probably in in uh, late 2019 we said we expect to go sideways uh, we would expect to go sideways for at least a year uh, probably a lot longer why well mainly just because that's what happened last time and of course you know extrapolating from you know just one prior uh uh you know price movement of litecoin isn't necessarily you know that indicative of what would happen in the future as we've said before all models are wrong but some are useful but if this is what happened last time then i feel like there's at least a good chance it's going to happen again or that's what i said back then um more so than say expecting it to go up 10x or, or drop say 90 percent. it just seems like most likely it's going to do some repetition of what it did um last time now uh where does that put us? So that was when I when I talked about it last. I think you know the price of Litecoin was somewhere over here, um, and and we were coming down in this region. And I said, okay, guys, expect us to just more or less move sideways for um, the next year at least, probably a little bit longer. Um, and you can see that for the most part we have now. I you know I, I certainly did not suggest that Litecoin would do something like this, where it would kind of have another pump back up. Uh, in the beginning of 2020 and then to come back down and then to settle here but for the most part you know we have just been moving sideways if you I mean if you just kind of ignore the noise going up to this regression band and down this down to this regression band um, we have more or less just been moving sideways and again you know what's a couple regression bands among friends um, now the first thing I should say about these logarithmic regression bands is that they, they don't actually necessarily mean anything. It's just it's just to kind of gauge where we are within a market cycle. And, you know, if we're if we're really starting to kind of hone in on a, on a fair value before we before we take off. And the idea is that, you know, you can see that we're, we're dropping down regression bands from peak to peak. Um, and we're actually moving up regression bands from from bottom to bottom. And that's partially just the way I drew these bands. I mean, I could have drawn them, you know, where they where they kind of come up like that or something. Um, but the way that I drew them, this is this is how it is for Litecoin, and I think what we're going to ultimately see is it is it kind of just hone in where you know the the peaks are gonna are gonna continue to drop down, and then the bottoms are gonna continue to be higher um, with this set of regression bands until ultimately you know Litecoin kind of comes to its you know ultimate fair value and has relatively low volatility at that level. Now. One question, you know, you might have is, well, does Ben own Litecoin? Well, you know, this is not financial advice. I do not personally own Litecoin right now, and we're going to talk about why. So remember, we said, well, we would expect to move sideways for the foreseeable future. Well, what happened that triggered Litecoin's move? Well, if you watched the video recently we did on XRP, which I also don't currently own, it's it was Bitcoin getting to its previous all time high. When Bitcoin got above the 20 week moving average and held it as support, you know, this worked well for some coins like Ethereum, but coins like Litecoin and XRP really didn't do, do much of anything. They just kind of kept going sideways. And in fact, they continued to bleed against Bitcoin until Bitcoin got to its previous all time high in the first quarter of 2017. So in the first quarter of 2017, this is what triggered the, the move that Litecoin saw that, you know, took it from a few bucks up to almost $400. Um, and you know you see that the moves that kind of go before the halvings are are dwarfed by these these moves that when Bitcoin gets to its previous all time high, there's a lot of confidence that returns to the market. All these people jump back in. They say, oh man, Bitcoin's 
uh, you know, it's going to be at 20K, I can only afford like 0.05 Bitcoin. Oh, but I can afford several Litecoin. So this is generally the thinking. I, I agree that it's honestly a uh, flawed thinking and you should not think like that. But I mean, <laughs> that's how the average investor in cryptocurrency thinks. Um, and this is, you know, this is one of the reasons why I say, you know, you can make money in XRP and you can make money in Litecoin. It's just, you know, getting into the market at key times would be helpful. You know, do you really want to hold Litecoin when everything's going to say, every, like all history shows that it's just going to continue to bleed um, over the macro scale until Bitcoin gets to a key milestone? Do you just hold it that entire time? Or do you hold Bitcoin or other coins that are, you know, that are that are newer, have a lot more momentum behind them. Um, do you do that? And then once you get once Bitcoin gets to its previous all time high, you take some of those profits and then put it into coins like Litecoin that maybe, you know, I mean, I, I can't say that it'll be a good investment then, especially considering those are going to probably be other investments at that time that would actually be better. But the idea is that you're if you're if you're married to the idea of holding Litecoin, um, then historically speaking, I mean, there's key times to hold it and then there's key times not to hold it. And just based on historical data, this is not one of the times uh, you would necessarily want to hold Litecoin. Now, if, you're, if your goal is to just hold a coin that you, you want to just kind of see move sideways, plus or minus, you know, 10 or 20 bucks or so, maybe a little bit more over the next year, then maybe Litecoin, Litecoin is your thing. Um, and again, I mean, you know, Ben could be wrong. Maybe maybe we do something different. Maybe maybe Litecoin shoots up um, back to a hundred dollars next month, and and you know Litecoin says to hell with the model. Um, I'm going to do something different. But I don't operate on on these you know speculative what ifs. I just look at the data and I try to make informed decisions based on what the data suggests. This is all I do. I don't really care about what some random Twitter person thinks or you know what some random article might say. I think it's all noise, and I think uh, for the most part, you just look at the data, and the data will tell the story. And it's just a matter of interpreting the data um, to tell you the right story, so that you can use that data to inform your own decisions. Um, so, what does that mean? That means that I will not personally own Litecoin until, at the very least, Bitcoin gets to its previous all-time high. And even then, I'm not so sure. Um, of course, we'll make videos updating at that time, um, and that also means that if Litecoin does move in the meantime. Uh, then I wish you guys a good mission. It's not that I would be upset. It's just that you know my there's an opportunity cost of having your your portfolio exposed to Litecoin uh, because that means you're not having it exposed to say you know Bitcoin or Ethereum or other coins that you might want to see in your portfolio, um, and that opportunity cost can be very high. So even if Litecoin moves, uh, maybe the other investment that I had in place of it move you know had a better move, and in fact I would I would you know wager to think that that would be the case um, because already you know the the four main coins I talk about on the channel Bitcoin Ethereum Chainlink and ADA I mean for the most part those have been outperforming Litecoin um, uh, yeah I mean this year for sure uh, so just something to consider um, you know this is this is kind of where I, where I am on Litecoin so you generally see if we're just going to extend it out to say 2024 you can see kind of the move up before the having the move down going into the having and then the sideways movement here it was for over a year and then here we're kind of expecting something similar um, maybe it goes with the red band maybe it goes with the blue um, doesn't really matter the general idea is that it's probably going to move sideways for a while um, at least until Bitcoin gets to its previous all-time high and maybe we're gonna see it continue to drop down regression bands um, at its peak so if this is our future peak of say around a thousand dollars per Litecoin off in 2023 then maybe this is the path we would take to get there now, some of you may be wondering, well, where, like, what has been thinking? Like, why would, why is he showing a peak in 2023? I mean, everyone knows that that crypto is on a four-year cycle and that we're going to peak in 2021. Well, again, I have a lot of videos that show why I think this. Um, and for the most part, most of my audience is probably sick of me hearing, t hearing me talk about it. Um, but the general idea, just briefly, if you're new to the channel, is that, you know, in the last cycle, we saw that in this, this is our primary regression band of Bitcoin fit to quote unquote non bubble data. Um, and in that scenario, you know, Bitcoin did get to its previous all time high within that regression band. Um, and it wasn't until that that it then went, you know, parabolic. We, we, we made a video a while back 
uh, where we show that even in a bull market, there's a, you know, there's a phase of a slower increase and then it goes parabolic once it gets to its previous all time high. Um, and so you can see that Bitcoin slowly worked its way up within this regression band to its previous all time high and then went parabolic. If we were to do the same thing, we, if we were to meet 20K and a sustained 20K um, uh, within the regression band, it might happen around you know, the end of 2021, beginning of 2022. And if our market cycle looks like that, then late, you know, around that, the beginning of 2022 or so would be when Bitcoin gets to its previous all time high. If you just draw a line sideways out here, it kind of gets to this regression band right here, just like it did in the last market cycle. It moved from this purple one down to the orange one over the course of over a year. If we do something similar, keeping in mind lengthening cycles, then we're going to, we're maybe going to do something similar where we started at the red band and we're going to mainly move sideways. But since our regression bands monotonically increase, we're going to slowly get closer and closer to that blue band here by 2022. And then, then it's going to take off and, you know, take off might mean a, um, you know, a nice multiple on your investment over the course of a couple of years. Uh, this is the general thinking I have with respect to Litecoin. I do think there are better uh, coins to hold out there. Uh, there's a huge opportunity cost with holding Litecoin, especially now. Um, but personally speaking, and again, this is not financial advice. If I were to hold Litecoin, then I would not be buying it until at least Bitcoin got to its previous all time high. And I would project that that might not happen for maybe another 15 months or 16 months or so. Um, but if it happens sooner, then the same, the same thing would apply. You know, if Bitcoin gets to its previous all time high and holds it and it's sustainable by say the middle of 2021, then the same thing would apply. I would say, okay, well now might be the time to, to get some exposure to Litecoin if you're, you know, dead set on the fact that you need to hold it in your portfolio. Um, one of the things I think is concerning with Litecoin and is that it pretty much bleeds with respect to Bitcoin over the long haul. So if you just draw a trend line, um, from the from these you know shorter term peaks, this is the ratio of Litecoin to Bitcoin. So the, the valuation of Litecoin to Bitcoin, you can see that it really is decreasing. It's not like you know other coins that maybe oscillate in a window. It just kind of goes down, um, and that's just what the data says. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. Uh, you can see we kind of have this lower bound region over here where we. We do kind of sometimes hold support on this um, in this region like we did here and over here. Uh, but in the last market cycle, the valuation of Litecoin with respect to Bitcoin really took a hit during the second half of the year of 2016 going into 2017 when Bitcoin was making that move to its previous all time high. And you can see in the current cycle, we've already started to do that same thing. We've, we've come into this band. And if Bitcoin were to go to its previous all time high over the course of the next, say, 14, 15, 16 months or something, then this could send the ratio of Litecoin to Bitcoin maybe back down to this level. Um, and, and maybe that would be the buy signal that, that some people would need with, um, with respect to Litecoin. But for the most part, it does not look good because it seems like, you know, we're continuing to, to decrease. So even if we were to go back up to this line, I, I still think that the valuation of Litecoin with respect to Bitcoin will continue to decrease. And I haven't shown it on this chart, but if you just use your imagination and you extend this white line out to say 2023, it's probably gonna get close to that, you know, 10 to the minus two valuation. Well, what did we say? Well, if Bitcoin goes to 100K, which I think is, is a likely possibility over the course of the next, say three, three years or so, plus or minus maybe six to eight months, then, um, you know, if, if Bitcoin goes to 100K and the valuation of Litecoin to Bitcoin peaks at 0.01, well, where would that put us? It would put us at a $1,000 Litecoin. Okay, so we're just bringing it full circle. Um, finally, you can see if we draw that trend line here, you can see we are, I'm just drawing it to where we currently are. You can see that we did dip below that region. Um, and additionally, if you see this trend line here, it, it does show that we tend to, you know, when we when we dip below this line, we tend to dip pretty hard uh, before kind of coming back up. And you can see all these different places where we where we came down to this trend line and held it as support for a little bit. If I just toggle back and forth, you can see those support regions. I'm not trying to hide anything here. Um, uh, so we dot we dropped below it here, came back up, dropped below it again, back up again. Each time we're dropping below it over here, it's getting lower and lower down on the totem pole, and then. You know, during the bull market of 2017, it actually stayed above this trend line for, for a little while and held support on it 
when Bitcoin kind of reached the end of its bull run and Litecoin had its own kind of last hurrah, if you will. Um, and this wasn't the exact end of the Bitcoin bull run, uh, but even during the bear market, it continued to hold support, hold support, hold support, and hold support, and now it's dropped below. And if, if it were me, well, I don't know what's going to happen. I would gander to think that likely what's going to happen is that at some point, Bitcoin will make a move to 20K and Litecoin's going to sit humdrum where it currently is or where it is at that point. I mean, it might go up. I mean, you know, the price of Litecoin, if Bitcoin's going up to 20K, I'm sure that the price of Litecoin, or I would guess that the price of Litecoin would go up as well too. You know, it would go up some as well, but I don't think it would maintain its valuation against Bitcoin. It will likely drop um, and probably drop into this region here. And then maybe uh, if, if everything aligns up, then maybe buying Litecoin when Bitcoin gets to its previous all-time high in about 16 months will be a nice opportunity, um, but we'll have, to evaluate, we'll have to evaluate that at the time. Um, so let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. We do have a premium list. If you guys like this content, uh, want to see more of it on the premium list, you get access to four different things. You get a weekly newsletter, which is backed by data science, quantitative finance. You get a weekly premium video, um, we actually, last week or, or a week or two ago, we actually had two premium videos. Um, you get at least one premium video per week. You get access to a Google Sheets dashboard with live risk levels. By the way, Litecoin is on that, on that risk level dashboard, uh, as well as other regression analysis. And then also, if you are on the premium list, I want to alert you to the fact that there is a private Telegram alerts channel where I just post my canned thoughts on the market. Uh, I, I try to make a, a few posts every single day. I'm sure I'm gonna miss some days here or there. But for the most part, this is where I kind of communicate to the audience. All right, guys, this is what I think. Um, and, you know, this is what I'm doing. Uh, it's not financial advice. It's just what I see the markets, how I see the markets through my own lens, which is obviously somewhat flawed. Um, but I'm just kind of communicating what the data says. So if you want, if you like that idea, you want to be part of that community, then do check out my premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Uh, and there's actually about 400 people on the list. So if you have any questions about joining, um, obviously don't ask me because I'm fairly biased whether you should join. You can join my Telegram channel, the public channel, and ask away, ask questions, and I'm sure uh, some people will give you um, their candid thoughts on, on, on the premium list. So uh, please check it out. I uh, Please subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. I, I am trying to grow the channel. We're currently at 26,000 people. My original goal for this year, uh, we hit 10,000 people at the end of, so I started the channel um, summer of 2019. My, my goal was to get to 10,000 people. Well, my original goal was to get to 1,000 people by the end of 2019, and that quickly changed and I became more optimistic. So then my goal was to get to 10,000 people and I hit that on December 31st. And then my goal for this uh, year was to get to 30,000 people by the end of 2020. So I think we're gonna make it uh, maybe we can even get to 35,000, but we'll see. We know we'll see what happens. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the channel. Hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe, check out Telegram channel, and I'll see you guys next time.